for joining us. I'm Mercedes with Rocky Nook, and this is obviously Jeff Carlton, who's going to talk to you about what you really came here to see. But I just want to mention that Jeff's book, uh, The Photographer's Guide to Luminar 4, is available in our bookstore, and you can save 40% on it with the code LUMINAR40 at checkout. And then also his next book, The Photographer's Guide to Luminar AI, is going to be, well, it's currently available for pre-order. And then we'll have the ebook available in the next couple of weeks. We're expecting it um, really any day now, but if you make your pre-order, you'll get that ebook delivered directly to your inbox as soon as it is available. And you can use that Luminar 40 code as well to save 40% on that also. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Jeff here in a second, but as, as the uh, webinar is going on, if you have any questions, go ahead and submit them in the chat or in the Q&A box. Uh, we also have Kevin from Skylum in the chat who can field questions too. And um, you know, for him working for Luminar, he knows quite a bit. So that's definitely a great resource. If you submit your questions in the chat, uh, he will be able to help you there as well. Anything that goes to the Q&A box, uh, I will ask Jeff at the end of his presentation. So, oh, and one last thing is don't worry if you uh, have to leave early or if you're, you know, you miss a little bit because this is being recorded and we will put it up on YouTube and email it to you tomorrow so you can watch it again if there's something you want to see again or if you had to leave early. Uh, don't worry, the replay will be available for you then. So, Jeff, I will let you take it over from here. Excellent. All right. Thanks, everybody. And uh, hi, Kevin. Um, uh, Kevin has been a great resource uh, in working on these books. So um, if you're answering or if you're asking a question and I don't have the answer or he gets to it first, um, you know that this is coming from an excellent source. So, um, all right. So I'm going to talk mostly today about Luminar 4. And uh, I just want to start off by saying, you know, yes, there are now two Luminars. There's Luminar 4 and Luminar AI. And um, they're both, uh, you know, they, they both still completely work. Some have uh, features that the other one doesn't. Um, and so because we're sort of talking about my book, Luminar 4, because that's the one that's out that you can get right now, um, I'm going to be demonstrating things in Luminar 4. Um, if we have any you know, specific questions about Luminar AI, we can talk about those too. Um, but th this is going to be mostly focused on uh, Luminar 4. Now, part of the, the, the impetus behind doing this, we were trying to figure out what to do in terms of, you know, showing what Luminar can, can do. And there are other webinars that we've done. You can find them at the Rocky Nook YouTube channel um, where I, I sort of done like an overview. And I, I did one about um, talking specifically about masks and layers and portrait editing. And so definitely go check those out. And so the, the, the next question is like, like, what should we do? Should we just do another walkthrough of a landscape? And one of the things that I find great about Luminar is it has tools that will let you, you know, rescue or save shots that as you're looking through your library, you'd be like, eh, you know, that one didn't work out. Um, it was, like the exposure was bad or um, I was in a hurry and you know the the things that maybe on the first glance you would just sort of say well all right that's not perfectly exposed so I'm not even going to bother with it well sometimes you like sometimes those images aren't just to be thrown out right um, I'll, I'll, I'll show definitely show a few uh, examples as we as we get into this, but um, there are sometimes when you know maybe the expression on somebody's face was a lot better in the version that was too dark than you know the other one that may have been perfectly exposed or you know when when the flash didn't fire or something like that. Um, and there are also times when you know I mean I would love to say that I'm a photographer who goes out every time and nails it in camera and walks away with a perfect exposure and then, you know, has breakfast and coffee and my life is perfect. It, it doesn't happen. I mean, it happens occasionally. And I absolutely try to get things, you know, in camera as much as I can. But there are sometimes when that just doesn't work. Again, I'll show you a, another example where, um, you know, I 
will often deliberately underexpose because I don't want to blow out the highlights in the sky, right? And if we were just shooting and saying, you know, I'm going to take this picture and that's the only thing that I can do with it, then it, it, it would be something to throw away. But that's the thing about editing. And that's the thing about software like Luminar, where there's a lot more image data in that file that you can work with. And so you can rescue, you know, quote unquote, bad images, or you could take something that you know, it's perfectly fine. Like it was a fine shot. But in your head, you're thinking, you know what, when I was there, I really remember the the golden highlights on the grass, or I remember this and that. And you know, what my camera recorded isn't exactly what I thought about when I was there. And I can picture something a little better in my head. Well, you bring that into Luminar and you can make that happen. So that's that's really kind of cool. Okay, so that is me um, sort of pontificating about, ooh, software editing is great. Um, I, I will say, uh, one of the things that I've learned in being a photographer and working with software, um, the more you use editing software, the more your brain is going to pick up on what's possible. And I find that to be incredibly useful when I'm out shooting because I can say, all right, I know that this area here is probably going to be too dark, but I also know that there's enough uh, data that I can, I can, I can work with that. And so, you know, I guess the overarching idea here is uh, don't go out and think, oh, all my images are too dark and I, I'm a terrible photographer. Why am I even doing this? Because, you know, A, well, you got to go outside and, and take some photos and like that is its own reward right there. But there's so much you can do when you get back to the desktop. And, uh, you know, with something like Luminar, there's so much you can do that's not going to take you hours and hours and hours, which is also a really great thing. OK, so that is me. Now, let me uh, share my screen real quick so you don't have to keep looking at me. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, hopefully uh, you can see, uh, this is Luminar 4, and it's a nice little uh, ad for my book. Go buy the book, it's a good book. Um, okay, so for example, I'm gonna start with this, this uh, landscape shot that I took. Now, Often I like to look at something like this and say, all right, what's wrong? Obviously there's a lot of things wrong with it. Um, it's really, really dark. You can't even actually tell. You can tell that there's a sky, there's a little wispy cloud there, um, and there's a whole bunch of really dark foreground. Well, of course, when I was there with my human eyes, I could see everything much better, uh, but you know, the, the camera sees things differently. So I deliberately shot this because I'm shooting directly into the sun and I wanted that, 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 that glow that's coming from it. Um, you'll see the, the sun rays. I shot this at a, at a high, um, excuse me, a high aperture uh, to kind of, you know, get some of those sun rays. Um, but I knew that I was sacrificing the detail in the foreground because if I had exposed it any higher, then the, the sky would just be gone. In fact, I have a like a, a one that I shot after it. So this is um, probably shot, you know, seconds after the previous shot. And this is an example of the foreground being fairly well exposed, but there's just no sky there, right? So let's go back here. So what can we do with this? Now, one of the things that I like to do is um, kind of hit hit the auto button, quote unquote, auto button. And in Luminar, that auto button is AI enhance. Also, my, my MacBook Pro fan is just going crazy. So uh, I don't think my microphone is picking it up, but if it is, that's, that's what you're hearing. Okay, so um, AI enhance is basically the thing that says, let the software take over and 
do what it thinks should be done for this image. So for example, like it would know that it's dark. It, will, it would know that this is probably a landscape shot. Um, so if I drag the AI accent slider all the way up, it definitely helps. But honestly, this is a really dark image. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's done a bit. And, you know, in, in some cases, uh, you, you increase AI accent on an image, and that's really all you need to do, seriously. You could be like, oh boy, I don't, I don't have any time to edit these photos. Go to one, you pump up AI accent, you're like, oh, well, it kind of did everything I wanted, the exposure and the color, uh, and then you're done. Super, super great uh, part of AI accent. But because we're, we're being a little bit more uh, in depth here, I'm gonna turn off AI accent. We're just gonna work on the light tools and see what we can do to bring this up. Now, um, the first inclination a lot of people have is uh, we need to increase the exposure, right? It's too dark, we need to add more light. So if we increase the exposure, well, see, now we have that same problem as we had with the other image, which is we're getting um, more light in the foreground, but the sky is just gone. And even though this did not turn out to be a really dramatic sky that day, um, we still want that, that gradation, that, that blue and, and the orange and those hues. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to pump up the shadows. Now shadows is, is basically like, it's, it's just bringing up the darkest areas, right? And that does a lot of work. It's not doing everything for us, but what it's doing is you can see we're bring, getting a lot of detail out of the foreground and it's not messing with the sky at all. Now I should also point out, uh, I'm working on a raw file here. Um, if you shot in raw, there's, there's a lot more data inside the file to pull this, this, this detail out. Um, if I were shooting on just a JPEG, we would have some success, but probably not as much because a JPEG basically, uh, you know, burns the version that it creates and there's just not a whole lot of data there to work with. So especially for something like this, shooting in raw is, is the way to go. Okay, so um, shadows did quite a lot. Um, I also like to increase the whites sometimes, although the danger here is if we look at the sun, it's, that's starting to get a little bit too white. Now, another thing that I advocate highly is to look at the histogram. Histogram can be really important because the histogram tells you, in, in this case, um, on the left-hand side, we have, uh, in, sorry, the histogram is up in the, the upper right corner. On the left-hand side, these are the darks, and we have a lot of pixels that are really dark. And we have some pixels that are sort of, you know, um, medium uh, in the mid-range, and then the far right is your, your highest, uh, brightest pixels. So if you look at the histogram as I increase the exposure, everything slides over to the right, and it gets stacked way up to the, to the, the right-hand side, and that causes what we call clipping which means that some pixels are just blown out completely to white, which we don't want. Can't really do anything with it. So back to where we are here. Because this is not exactly um, what I'm looking for, the, the, the foreground is still, is still pretty, pretty dark. Um, I, can, I can increase the exposure a bit, but, but then I'm like fighting with the sky. Like there has to be some sort of middle range here, is it, right? Well, there is. So the next thing I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna sort of jump around the tools a little bit because my thought process here is, um, like right now I'm just working on the exposure. So if I go to the Pro Tools, the set of Pro Tools over to the, to the right, and I go to the Adjustable Gradient. Now the Adjustable Gradient says, I just wanna affect either the top part of the screen or the bottom part of the screen, or of the image, excuse me. So when I click set orientation, I can basically say, this is where I want things to split. So I'm gonna put the middle right on the horizon line, and I'm going to bring up 
uh, this lower line. And what this is, is um, basically a gradation is the, the edit we're about to make will be completely solid all the way up to this line and then gradually fade into um, basically transparent in, in the middle line. So what I can do is I can say, all right, I just want to affect the bottom. So I click the bottom and now I can add a little bit more shadows, but I can also increase the exposure quite a bit. Now, when I'm doing that, because this is an adjustable gradient, it's only affecting that part of the image. So again, my sky is still protected. Uh, the sun is not completely blown out or distorted. Um, the, the very center of the sun is completely white, but that's okay because obviously it's the sun and therefore, you know, we, we, we expect that to be really bright, but the area around it is still like a nice gradation of yellow. It hasn't uh, either blown out to white or occasionally when you increase exposure, you'll get like sort of weird banding around it. So this already is looking quite a bit better. And I can quickly look at a before and after, which is really helpful because as you're working, you might think, oh, I can't remember exactly how much I've done. Have I really made a big difference? Well, obviously I've made a huge difference. Um, or I can just click and see the whole image. So that already is quite a bit better. Now I'm going to do a couple of other things. I'm going to jump back to the Essentials tools. And um, part of what I mentioned earlier, what I liked about this spot on this day was there was a lot of, a lot of golden hues that were getting picked up by these grasses. Well, uh, there are various ways you could do that. There are you know, color tools and such. But uh, the good people at Skylum were like, you know what? When you're working on a landscape, oftentimes there are specific things that, that you want to have corrected. So for example, we have under the landscape enhancer tool, a golden hour slider. And the golden hour slider just makes everything a little bit more golden. And so that, that gives me like a little bit more of that warmth. If I wanted to, I could also go to the, the back to the light tool and I could increase the temperature, the, the white balance of the whole thing. But, you know, I don't want it to seem garish, right? Um, so I'm going to just increase that just a little bit. Now, what that gives me is, you know, more warmth because this was obviously like a cold day, but you're getting a little bit of that, that light warmth from the sun. Now, as I look at this right now, the sun actually, if I zoom in, um, like this looks just a little bit overcooked to me. Um, like what I don't want is for this to look like sort of the, the old style HDR images where basically everything was turned up to 150%. Uh, that's, that's not what I'm looking for. And so when I look at this, I think, hmm, um, there's, there's just a little bit too much of, of the yellow there. Okay, well, we have a way to fix that too. So we can go into color. And under advanced settings, I can say, I just want to affect the yellow tones in the image. And so if I select yellow there, I can bring down the luminance a little bit. Actually, luminance is probably not what I want. I think saturation. I want to bring the saturation down a little bit in the yellow and bring it down just a little bit in the orange. And that, that kind of smooths that out so it doesn't look like, you know, I'm punching you in the face with an orange highlighter or something. Um, what else could I do? Um, I could probably increase the foliage enhancement here. The foliage enhancer um, just makes some of that, that, that brownish grass a little more green. And if I really wanted to go crazy, I could, um, like, Again, one of the things that I liked about this was just these little highlights on the grass, right? Um, so I can accentuate those by making more specific edits. 
So most of what we've done here, except for the, the adjustable gradient, is um, make edits that affect the entire image. Well, you can also create masks and you can do things that say, I just want these little areas to be affected. And in Luminar 4, the way to do that is to create a new adjustment layer. Now, with the adjustment layer, obviously nothing has really changed here. But what is sort of underneath this that you can't see um, visually here is that I now have access to all the same editing tools that I had before. And so I could make edits on top of the other edits. So for example, I want to go into um, color, right? And um, I'm going to increase the saturation and I'm going to actually now overcook this again. And you're thinking, uh, dude, you just went to a lot of trouble to get rid of that. But what I'm specifically looking at are these grasses, these sun highlights on the grasses. Now, this is if I were to leave this as it was, um, I don't think I would like this image because it, it's just way too saturated. But what I can do here is I can say edit mask and I can choose a brush. And that lets me paint where I want this saturation effect to appear. And then when I paint this, it's going to show me where that is. And then only the areas that I paint are going to have this effect on them. And you know the the standard webinar uh, caveat applies in that I'm doing these things quickly just to show um, what it's doing. Okay, and now um, I have this mask, so only these effect areas that I that I painted are getting this effect. And if I wanted to, you know, I could I could even go even higher there, um, or I could still use my specific color channels and you know maybe make make the oranges even more orange that right there is terrible so i'm not going to do that but you get the idea you have a lot of control over what gets edited where so now i can go um actually i think uh i will just leave this as it is i think probably another thing that i might want to do is maybe uh crop it but basically you know, we started with this, and normally I would say, nope, that's not a good shot, but I knew that there was enough, uh, enough to work with there that I could bring out this detail and not lose my sky and not completely get rid of the sun. <clears throat> Excuse me. So... Um, Yeah, so um, I, I think I'll, I'll leave this one here. Um, do we have any uh, uh, questions before I jump to the next image? We, it looks like Kevin is working on the answer to one. Let me see, there was one here too. Excellent. Um, oh, this is a good question, but maybe you wanna circle back to it a little bit later. It says, now that Luminar AI is out, do you find that you still frequently use Luminar 4? Ah, that's a very good question. Um, uh, yes and no. Basically, um, since I've been using uh, Luminar AI, and I think you know a, a lot of that too is just because um, I've been writing the book and you know going back and forth. Um, there are definitely strengths and weaknesses. When I want to do something that has layers, like I specifically want layers, that's when I will jump into Luminar Four because. Um, you know, the, as I just showed you, the the adjustment layer gives me all the tools that are available, like all the editing tools um, that I can do on a separate layer and be really more precise about where um, where I'm making these edits. Uh, Luminar AI, um, for those who haven't used it yet, uh, does not have layers. Um, I think um, you know, Skylum basically said, look, we, we don't want to add complexity. And I'm guessing, you know, from, uh, you know, feedback from users and things like some people, especially people who are new to editing, 
uh, you know, you say layers and their brains just sort of like short out a little bit. Um, I know, you know, that's the same with like, like Photoshop. You're like, Hey, you want to play with some Photoshop layers? And you're like, no, 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 no. I'm going to, I'm going to go get something to drink. Um, and so, so with Luminar AI, uh, you don't have layers. Instead, there's a whole masking tool and, uh, that in some ways, and I know Kevin doesn't want me to say this masks can act like layers, um, which is all detailed in my new book. Um, and so th there are a lot of things that you can do. The, the thing that I find is when you're creating a mask like that, you don't have as many tools to work with. So it's great for doing um, actually like sort of what I just did. You could totally do that with a mask in Luminar AI um, by, you know, increasing the exposure, I'm sorry, uh, increasing the saturation and then, uh, you know, dabbing those onto specific areas. You can totally do that. Um, but if I wanted to, you know, specifically, um, you know, do a, well, let's see, like, let's say I want to add an adjustment layer and I wanted to go to the glow tool, right? I'm going to add some glow to this, make it very, um, we are now in a 1970s Hallmark card, right? Um, this is something that, that I would probably use Luminar 4 for because I can, I can do that on a separate adjustment layer that's, that's not uh, affecting the other things. Okay. Anything else before I jump next? Nope. I think you should uh, go on to the next and we'll, we'll keep our eye out too. Awesome. Okay. All right, so the next picture, again, um, this is something that, that uh, uh, frequently pops up in my images. Um, something that's underexposed. But in this case, uh, this wasn't actually a, a, a case where I was underexposing for a specific purpose. This was just, I, I took a quick shot, right? And um, when we look at this image, a number of things are wrong. Um, it's, it's a challenging image for cameras because we have dark shadow, but we also have bright highlights. This is sort of one of the challenges when you're shooting in a forest because you've got, you know, really uh, dramatic changes in the light. And so again, I don't want to blow out any highlights. And so I, I you know, just said it with this so that um, I wasn't going to just overexpose everything. Well, it's underexposed. But also part of this is, um, you know, I have another shot of the two of them that's perfectly fine, but I really like their expressions in this. And you can't really tell right now, it, probably not um, over the, the Zoom call, but it's just a sort of happy, candid moment. And so in terms of, of, of the content of the image, I like this better than another shot where they're better exposed, but they're kind of, you know, they're, they're posing, right? So how can we fix this? Um, so we will go into the light tools and we're going to do a lot of the same kind of stuff. You'll, you, you, um, develop kind of a rhythm as to, you know, what, what tools you hit, um, based on what the image looks like. So if we go to AI accent, um, you know, that is actually pretty darn good. Actually, I might just stick with that because we've, we've still got, you know, um, detail in the shadows where we see them a little bit better um, and nothing is blown out. I mean, actually one telltale thing in uh, uh, images of forests and shots, uh, if you see little bits of sky come through and there's still a little bit of blue there, that means it's not overexposed. And if we look at the histogram, the histogram, although it's still heavily weighted toward the left where it's dark, on the right hand side, we don't have anything that's overexposed. So, um, you know, this actually AI enhance, uh, the, the AI accent has done a really good job. So let's just build on that. So they're still a little bit too dark. I'm going to increase the shadows, right? And if you look at the, the histogram while I'm doing that, 
again, shadows, it, it's only affecting the, the, the dark areas and the midtones. And so, um, you know, the, the histogram never pushes into overexposure. So I can open that up just a little bit. And when we zoom in, like you can definitely see them better, which is, which is great. Um, and I think what I'm going to do next is um, one sort of typical thing when you're dealing with pictures of people is, uh, you know, their, their, their bodies are exposed pretty well. Um, they're still a little bit dark, but then again, you know, I don't want to make it look fake. I don't want to, you know, bring up the exposure so that they're, they don't look like they're naturally in their environment. Um, but their faces are still a little bit dark. So one thing you could do in a number of other uh, image editors is you would like create a mask and or paint over their faces or whatever. Uh, but Luminar is like, wait a minute. Uh, I'm a software program. Maybe I shouldn't anthropomorphize a software app. Anyway, uh, Luminar can tell what's in the image, right? So it, it, it scans and the, the AI portions of the imaging in, engine will look and say, oh, you know what? Those look like people. And, uh, you know, because I can see faces and arms and torsos. And uh, because I can also see people, well, I know what a face looks like. And so it has specific portrait tools. Now, oftentimes you'll be using the portrait tools for maybe like a, you know, quote unquote portrait where you have somebody who's, you know, perhaps more full in the frame. But you don't have to just think that portrait tools are only for formal portraits. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open the AI portrait enhancer. And I'm just going to increase the face light slider just a bit. Actually, I'll, I'll do it quite a bit just to, see, to show what's going on. So because Luminar knows which areas are faces, it can just add illumination, add some exposure just to those areas. And, you know, we have two people in this shot. If there were a few more people in the shot, th they would also get the same effect. And so, again, in, you know, um, 20 seconds or so, I was able to add some illumination to their faces. It doesn't look like they've been hit by a flash. It doesn't look like I've, um, you know, made a separate mask and, and, you know, gone to a whole bunch of great lengths. It looks natural, like, oh, maybe there's a shaft of sun that's sort of hitting right in that area. And so now we have an image that is, you know, certainly much better than it was to start with. And we have these great expressions. We have this like nice moment of hiking in the woods, uh, you know, a, a mother and son enjoying the outdoors. Um, if I wanted to, I could also go into the, uh, the vignette tool. And what I want to do with the vignette tool is I'm going to uh, create a dark vignette around them. Now, that's too dark, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just make, make the edges around them darker a little bit. I'm going to increase the feathering so it's, it blends a little bit better. And what this does is it's, it's bringing your eye more toward the center of the frame so you're not as distracted by the stuff around the edges. And in fact, one of the cool things that I love about Luminar's vignette tool is this inner light slider. Because sometimes you'll, you'll add a vignette and it does what you want. It's, it, it's darkening the edges and it's, it's bringing more attention to the middle of the, of the image. Um, but just by nature of it, 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 it's kind of darkening everything. So rather than go back to the light tool and adjust the shadows of the exposure and all that, I can just increase inner light. And so I still have the vignette, but it's, it's just, you know, brightening up that, that middle section. So we're going to do before, boy, I'm just going to throw this away. I don't need this. It's not really good. After, hey, I would definitely print this or send this to them or post it on Facebook or whatever. So um, that's like a really good example of, you know, just having a few tools that 
um, you know, are, are specific to Luminar that can help you and, again, save you some time. You don't have to go and make um, a separate mask. You don't have to, you know, say, all right, now I'm going to paint their faces. Um, you absolutely can if you want to, but, um, you know, we all have better things to do than, than tedious image editing, right? <clears throat> okay. Um, let me jump into this, um, I think. Uh, oh, uh, somebody asks, how can you tell it, it is sky blue rather than blue fringe? That is a very good question. Um, I think just because um, I'm not really seeing blue fringing elsewhere. Um, and so it's, 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 it's picking up some of the, that, that sky, um, that, that sky color. And, you know, ultimately, uh, yeah, it, it might be blue fringing, but what I like about it is it's not, it hasn't just blown out to white, um, which I think would be a little bit more distracting. As you look at this image, of course, your face, uh, your face, your eyes are drawn to their faces. You're drawn to the people in the middle and your, your brain registers, ah, it must be a nice day because there's some blue in the sky, that kind of a thing. Good question though. Okay. I think the last one I'm going to do here before we jump to more questions, um, this, this beauty of a shot. Uh, this is up in Leavenworth, Washington, um, which is an hour or so away from where I live. And uh, I went up there in October because the, the, the leaves were changing. And this is like seriously one of the first images that I got. I, I like found a spot, pulled over on the road, set up my tripod. And of course, as you can probably imagine, uh, this looked better in person. Um, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, you know, we've got some, some, some mist uh, happening on these mountains over here. Like, like that immediately caught my eye. Uh, the sky is doing, you know, nothing super dramatic, but it's also kind of interesting maybe. And we have this river here. Um, again, I don't know if you can even see it because it's so dark right now. Um, and then this little, this little area where water had pooled. And so I was thinking, oh, there might be like an interesting reflection. Um, fine, right? And so this was actually one of them that I thought, okay, this, um, this is a bad shot, right? By itself, um, but there, there's gotta be some potential. So let's just work with it. See if it's even worth, uh, you know, creating or sharing. So uh, I'm going to jump into AI accident again, just to see what it, what it will do. And I see, oh, look, there, there is a little pool there and there's some rocks. And uh, it's amazing that I, I you know, could barely see that in the first place. Um, not bad. Everything's a little bit blue. Um, so I'm just going to dial that back down. Now let's go in and just work with this in our, in our, our light tools. Um, part of this too is because, you know, I've, um, as someone who's been editing photos for a while, my brain is a little bit more inclined to, to like say, okay, uh, I want to, you know, hit the exposure and the highlights and the shadows and, and work those sliders. Um, one of the, the great, great things about Luminar is it does a really good job of, of sort of straddling both of those worlds. You know, if you don't know very much about photo editing or you're just starting, you can absolutely jump in and there are tools that'll make things much better. If you know more about photo editing, you can absolutely jump in and there are you know, professional level tools that give you a, a really um, fine amount of control over what you're doing to your image. So I, I, I really love that because it, it's kind of a hard balance to, to, to make. Um, sometimes people go entirely on the side of, you know, um, we're going to make it super easy. And you're like, well, it's super easy, but I'd really like to do, you know, this, this, and this. And they're like, no, but it's super easy. And you're like, it's not what I'm looking for. Or uh, you can go the Photoshop route, which is, uh, you know, Photoshop, amazing tool, amazing capabilities, uh, amazingly complicated. So, you know, Luminar is a really good balance between those things. 
All right. Um, I will do more editing, less opining. Um, so first of all, let's let's just do the same thing that I did before. Let's work on on the exposure. Um, in this case, I'm just going to start with the whites. Um, it's I don't know how how common this is, but I, I I like working with the whites and the black sliders because that sometimes allows me to boost the the exposure without necessarily blowing everything open. Um, shadows definitely need work. And in this case, we're going to move that quite a bit. One thing about working with shadows, and this is also an example of uh, why shooting raw is good. If you have an area that's really, really dark and you bring up the shadows like that, um, sometimes, and you know, this will depend on the camera and, um, you know, uh, the, the software sometimes, um, whether you've shot in RAW, whether you've shot in JPEG, um, sometimes you'll get a lot of noise. And um, in, in this case, um, I shot this with a Fujifilm X-T3 um, that does a pretty good job with noise. And so even though this is really dark, it's not really, really noisy. Um, but uh, if you do run into, there's, there's also a, a denoise tool that would let you uh, smooth some of that out. Okay, um, we have uh, this image here. I'm going to uh, bring down the highlights a little bit. I haven't really talked about highlights much, but what this does is this just brings things back from that really that brightest, brightest edge and gives us a little more, a little more uh, detail in the clouds. And I'll also point out this is a very, um, very blue image. So I'm going to increase the temperature and just give it a little bit more, um, more of a natural feel. Now, when I do that, an interesting thing happens. Uh, the sky gets a little more, a little more colorful too. Now, when I was there on the day, the sky was very much just sort of gray, right? And that's fine. But here's another thing about editing photos. Uh, you know, I am not a a photojournalist. I'm not trying to, you know, um, accurately reflect the conditions on the day. I'm I'm trying to make something that looks good, that, that matches what I have in my head, or maybe what I don't yet have in my head, but I see the potential for. So what I'm going to do with this is um, I'm going to go ahead and sort of lean into that temperature change, because I like the idea of this being sort of like like a warm. Uh, in like break of day kind of morning. And uh, I'm going to go to my landscape enhancer. I'm going to increase the golden hour. So that, that gives me a little bit more uh, warmth and color. And um, if I wanted to, I'm going to go into the, the color tool, see what happens if we bring up the luminance on the oranges. Unfortunately, I, I, I hit the I hit Leavenworth like basically a week after everything was at peak foliage. I was the, the only time I could go up. So there's still a lot of a lot of uh, green, um, a, a lot of the, the trees in the background that did have more of the colorful fall uh, leaves um, had already dropped them. But, you know, whatever, we take the shot that we that we can get. All right. So that's already a little bit better now. I'm going to do something here that um, I will admit, and if, if you've read um, my book, um, I mentioned this in the book too. Um, so <laughs> Skylum came out with this tool called Sunrays, and I, I rolled my eyes pretty hard. I was like, oh, come on. Like we're going to have like fake sun rays all over the place. And there's still a part of me that's like, ah, oh, come on, really? Like, like, do we need to do that? Well, here's the thing. You can absolutely add sun rays that look terrible, right? This is the, the, the curse of, of good editing software. You can damage your images like no one's business. Uh, or you can do a lot of things that might be a little more subtle. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, increase the sun rays, right? Now, of course, we have a couple of problems here. Uh, one, it, it uh, this is a little bit too extreme. Two, 
that's not where the sun is. It sort of helps to have sun rays if you know where the sun is. But we can work with this, right? So I'm going to click Place Sun Center. And first of all, it's just kind of a cool effect to, to move this around. But I want to draw your attention to something else. All right, so if you can see where my mouse, uh, mouse pointer is, the sun is basically over here at like the lower left, just behind these, these mountains. Um, well, this rock and those mountains. Now, I'm going to put the sun there, but look at the rays as I move it over. And honestly, this is the thing that made me go, oh, okay, sunrise is, sun rays is really pretty cool. So when I bring this over, you notice we no longer have these like big blasting rays down here because the AI is seeing, oh, that looks like it's probably some sort of background image that would uh, you know, occlude the sunlight. So I can kind of tuck this down here or you know, maybe bring it just above where I have just a little bit of hint of sun rays coming out. And I'm gonna drop the amount a little bit so it's not super obvious. And you have like all sorts of controls, like you can choose how many sun rays there are, um, you know, how warm it is. Uh, you know, and of course, I'm just going to do this, this really quickly. You can have like long rays, short rays. But what we've done here is sort of add, um, you know, not a super artificial looking, uh, you know, cartoony, here's a bunch of sun rays zooming out uh, from the side. What we have here is a fairly realistic, oh, well, that's where the sun is. I'm just going to accentuate where that light is coming from. So um, I can do before and after. So here's before and here's after. And you also notice if you look at like the right side and the lower edge, um, the, the exposure of the entire image is being affected because it knows, okay, if there are, if the sun is behind that rock, then the light is not going to hit the pool in the, in the foreground. And so it kind of darkens that a little bit. So it's really, really, really kind of, uh, you know, smart about things like that. Um, I think uh, if I wanted to, I could also like say, um, create a new layer, a new adjustment layer. And maybe I want to just bring up some of the, um, some of the warmth in, in the lower area. Oh boy, now see there, I've increased the temperature and ruin the whole thing. This is the Bob Ross moment where you're like, oh, everything looks good. And then he added that, that tree and he, he ruined everything. Uh, but, but hang on, I can create a mask. And actually what I'm gonna do in this case, I'm gonna create a mask just for the entire layer. And I'm gonna say, I only wanna affect this area, just this reflected pool area. And then, when I have a mask on the layer versus a mask on the tool, anything that I do will affect just that area using any tool that I have. So, um, you know, this right here, probably not the ideal version, but I also don't want to go too far into it because I want to make sure we have some time for questions. But hopefully this gives you an idea of like what's possible and you know, we've taken an image that was just super dark and boring. It had some potential, but honestly, if I just showed this to somebody, they might be going, hmm, great. Perhaps we need to take the camera away from you for a while, little boy. And instead, I was able to like sort of bring some of what I saw in the picture to it. And if I were to spend more time on this, uh, it would look better, but that gives you an idea of, of what's possible and how all these tools can work together to, um, you know, <laughs> fulfill your vision, right? It sounds like a, a really bad cliche, but so much of photography is you are there and you're not just recording, you are making something. You have a vision of what, what's there and maybe you need to make the, the photo look like you felt that day and you can use tools that will that will bring that about if that makes any sense so uh with that um 
let's open to some questions. Hi, Jeff. So we have one that looks like Kevin just answered, but he thought maybe you would want to put your input in on it too. And the question is, is it possible to take a piece out of one image and put it in another image, like changing the background or adding one flower to another flower image? Uh, yes. So, um, so in, in Luminar 4, the, the, the layers um, capability is, um, what I've shown is basically using adjustment layers. Um, there are also, let's see if I can go to this. Um, there are also, and, and I'm, I'm stalling because I've forgotten the exact wording, but um, you can create a, a new image layer. And an image layer is basically, you're just bringing another image on top of um, your, your base layer, right? And so you could then bring that in and you could use the mask tools to, um, you know, erase the parts that you don't want. Um, in terms of, of replacing a sky, that's a very good question because um, sky replacement is one of those things that can be really difficult. If you've ever had to do it in, say, Photoshop, you're, you're using like the, the pen tool to define your areas and uh, it can just be maddening. Um, however, there's this AI sky replacement tool and um, right now it's not liking me. Oh, it's because I'm on an on a adjustment layer. Hang on. So the AI sky replacement tool, I can, I can say, you know what? This sky is really, it's, it's fine, right? It's not great, it's fine. Well, what if I want to, and I'm just gonna grab one. Um, what if I wanna do that? Right. So what this has done is um, the, the software has looked at this and said, OK, based on what I know about, you know, thousands and millions of images, uh, this area looks like a sky and this area right here is probably some hills or something. And so what it's done is it's just replaced that sky area. And the, there are things that you can do to to make it blend more. Um, it has this great relight scene uh, feature, which will, um, you know, in, in this case, it's more of a cloudy day, like a dark cloudy day. So it's making things darker as I increase the relight scene. Um, or, you know, I, I could just choose, uh, you know, something completely different. What you need to, to, to be careful with with the, with the sky replacement is uh, paying attention to, you know, where your light is coming from. Um, you know, in, in this case, um, actually, if I didn't have the sun rays here, we could probably have a little more flexibility in the other image where the sun was like right in the middle. If you wanted to use the sky replacement, you'd really need an image that had, um, you know, the sun right in the middle. Otherwise, you're like, hey, we've got these like these sun rays, these natural sun rays. Um, and yet there's another sun over there. Like, are we suddenly on Tatooine? Um, and so, you know, or making sure that, that that the shadows in your image match the light source. You know, but there are all sorts of options for that. Um, actually, in Luminar AI, uh, in fact, with something that I think just came out today, um, update three of Luminar, Luminar AI, there's, there are added controls for kind of positioning where that sky is. So that's, that's, that's really cool. We have another question here about how do you go back and edit a layer already created? Ah, um, to edit a layer that's already created, I can just go into my layers panel here. So here's my adjustment layer. And as long as this is selected, um, I can just jump to any of the edit tools. And let's say I wanted to add another adjustment layer. And I say to myself, you know what? Maybe what this needs is not so much the color stuff, maybe it needs to be a black and white image. Um, what's nice about doing a black and white conversion on a layer is this, I can say, all right, convert this to black and white. All right, ooh, ah. Um, and what's also nice, we have the, the, the abilities to, um, you know, change specific, specific hues. Uh, I don't know if that, that did anything because it's, anyway. Um, now, 
I like this because I'm like, okay, um, I want to see what black and white looks like. And I can go into the layers. And if I wanted to, I can actually even say, uh, rename this to black and white. And so I know that um, I can look at it and say, you know what, uh, let's sort of toggle this on and off, see if I like it or not. Um, layers are, are, uh, are stacked. And so whatever's on the top affects everything below it. Um, but if I say to myself, boy, you know what, uh, the sun rays, or sorry, the, the, the edits that I made in this adjustment layer here, which are the edits to the pool in the foreground, um, maybe I, I don't like that. So I can just turn that layer off, or I can select that layer. And now with that layer uh, selected, then I can make any further adjustments to it. And then uh, the black and white turned off because I've, I've jumped to the layer below it. But then if I want to jump to the top and activate that layer, that happens. We don't have any other questions right now. Um, okay. So I just want to give you a minute if you want to talk about uh, Luminar AI, since that book is coming out uh, within the next, or the print book will be here, I think, in a few months, but we'll have the ebook in a couple weeks. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, why don't we jump into Luminar AI and just show a couple, um, a couple things. Um, so here is a a portrait. Um, this is a portrait of a friend of mine. Um, and, and literally, this is like actually a really good example of, of circumstance and shooting. Um, we did a, a setup that, that was just against like a solid white background. Um, and we, we did this, uh, I want to say a couple months ago. So, you know, being very uh, you know, safe in terms of COVID precautions. Um, we did this outside, and then we were going to do the, the 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 setup with her against the backdrop, and then we were going to go across the street to a park and try to catch the the sunset with some sort of more natural surroundings. And as we were going, we had to go through this gate, and I was like, oh oh, like the wood on that on that gate is just amazing. Can you stand there? And we'll get a couple shots. And it was like boom, boom, boom. And then and then we we had to rush off to try to catch, capture the sunset. So um, here it is. Um, it's dark, but uh, I knew that I could do something with it. So um, if I go into the sorry, the edit tools. Um, a, a real quick thing, Luminar AI. It has a different interface, but a lot of the things. If if you've used Luminar four. Luminar AI is going to feel completely natural because um, a lot of the same tools are there and, um, you know, things have just been been moved around a little bit. Um, Luminar AI, as the name suggests, um, has more of an AI focus. And I believe, um, and Kevin can correct me, but basically um, like 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 the core engine is is more um, AI focused. So, you know, it, it's not that they, you know, put a new interface on Luminar 4, they rebuilt a bunch of stuff. Um, but of course, they didn't throw everything out. So we have a lot of the same, a lot of the same tools, the light tool and the color tool and all of that. Um, so, you know, we can increase the accent AI here just to see what that does. Um, it's not so bad. I'm going to, you know, bring up the temperature because I actually shot this um, at a, a, a white balance preset on my camera that didn't quite, like it worked fine in the previous setup, but was a little blue for this setup. So we're gonna you know, bring back some of the, the um, uh, skin tones. And I'm just gonna very quickly, you know, bring up the shadows and bring up the exposure a bit. And so you can see like, like a lot of that is, is still very, very similar. Um, obviously I'm not gonna use anything in the sky cause there is no sky. Um, the, the portrait tools, there, there are a lot more portrait tools, um, you know, AI based stuff. So for example, if we zoom in on her, there are a few things that we can do, like, um, like we can do, you know, uh, face light, um, 
there are controls for specifically for like eyes. One of the things that I will, if I'm doing a portrait, I will always go to, to, to the eye controls um, and just say with eye enhancer and just bring out a little more sparkle to the eyes. And in fact, in, in um, so the eye enhancer is, is present in Luminar 4. I love that part. Um, and they just expanded it in, in uh, Luminar AI. So for example, um, uh, actually, this is kind of cool. This is not really um, the case with this specific image, but um, you have, have this iris pop up. And um, let's say, uh, you know, you're, you're in a position where uh, the person's eye color just didn't come through, like maybe it was just a little bit in shade, but you know, they've got really, you know, pretty eyes. So what I can do is I can say, like, she has sort of gray eyes. So I can say iris gray. And what that's going to do is, well, it's a little bit too much right there, but basically it, it's going to add that eye color in into the, the, where the eyes are, because the AI knows where the eyes are. And then you can then work with it. Um, again, it's a little weird here because you could see her eye color in the first place, but I've worked on shots. And I think there's an example in the book where, uh, you know, like, like the, the person's eye color, it was just dark. And I knew that she had these amazing brown eyes. And so I was able to, you know, switch to the brown eye and, um, you know, sort of accentuate that. Or it, if you're in a position where, you know, you're doing something more artistic and you have a model and, you know, your, your color scheme is that it would be better if she had, you know, gray eyes, like you're not trying to say, you know, represent who that person is, you're doing something more creative or more um, abstract, you can you can do that without having to go in and, you know, go into Photoshop and paint and all that stuff. Um, and also, I think because the the Skylum engineers are just a little bit crazy at times, um, we can, of course, add the cat eye. Um, there's no good reason for this, but it's fun, right? So um, another thing that I really like about this, um, oh, there are also, you know, like mouth controls if you want to, um, you know, make someone's lips a little bit more red or maybe reduce, um, you know, make them darker, or whatever. That's, it's nice. Like what's great is because it knows a face, it knows all the parts of a face and you have a lot of different controls over, over what that is. Um, you can do a little bit of skin smoothing and, uh, you know, I will go on record and saying like, like, I don't like a lot of retouching, uh, especially for something like this, where, you know, like, like you're, you're trying to get a, you know, a, a picture of a real person. Um, but sometimes you want to have like, like a little bit of skin smoothing because it just makes it a little bit, uh, more, a little, I don't know. It's a little better. There's another word that I've completely forgotten because it was on my brain in just a second ago. Um, but you know, like like you want to sort of represent the best of of someone in a portrait. And what's nice about the skin smoothing here is it's not making her completely you know porcelain, not even remotely. It just adds like a little bit of enhancement, but there's still texture there. There's still wrinkles there. Wrinkles are awesome. Um, you know, like it's not trying to be a, you know, 1980s airbrushed uh, uh, record cover, that kind of a thing. So um, that was probably way more than you wanted to know. Um, and, and I'm not sure how we're doing for time, but um, you know, it's, has a lot of the same controls, you know, you see like, like glow and uh, mystical. Um, and, you know, my, my book covers, you know, what's, what was in Luminar 4 and what's in, in, in Luminar AI, um, you know, and basically like, like there's just a lot of stuff that has been uh, refined, like uh, in, in Luminar 4, um, the, uh, I want to say the, so there's a slight, slightly weird thing where if you're using the erase tool or the clone and stamp tool, um, it creates a new stamped layer. 
which means you're you're sort of burning in all of your images onto a new layer and then it's doing its it's erasing on that layer on the new layer um luminar ai doesn't try to do that it, it, you just have like like your image and um you don't have to like mess with all of that so um yeah anything else we don't have any other questions right now um and we did kind of breeze right past the hour mark <laughs> Thank you. So sorry much. about that. No, don't don't be sorry. This it was really cool to get a little preview of uh, Luminar AI. Um, I especially like the cat eyes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My favorite part. Yes, definitely. Every every image. I actually just did did a, a photo shoot um, with a family and. Um, it's it's my sister's family and like there's the secret evil part of me that wants to do cat eyes in every shot and just give it to them and not say anything and and see if they're like hello have you gone completely insane or if they would even notice i don't know what happens if you give cat eyes to a cat <clears throat> oh that's a very good question um Try because i <laughs> yeah yeah i i don't think luminar ai yet has um, uh, pet eye, um, uh, like, uh, identification, like, I don't know if, if it can see those, or, or maybe it does a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, there, there are things, I mean, like, uh, uh, some Sony cameras will be able to, like, like, they can spot uh, pet eyes and even bird eyes. If you're a birder and you have like super massive zoom lens, it can focus in on the eye. So, uh, you know, it's just a matter of time, I would yeah. bet. Yeah. Well, maybe we planted the seed with, with Kevin at Skylum. So, you know, who knows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, he says, he says this, the app can sometimes pick up gorillas and chimps, but not cats <laughs> yet. Yeah. I, I want to say yet. <laughs> um, one question did just come in and it asks if if the new book on Luminar AI will have the update for the latest 3.0. Um, excuse me. Uh, yes, um, I, I am thrilled to say uh, and again, thanks to Kevin um, for giving me a heads up that this was coming out. We were able to uh, literally um, update it for that. Um, th there are some things in like, for example, the the um, uh, the Sky AI tool, um, some additional controls, and uh, I I literally updated the book the day that it went to the printer. So um, yes, yes. Awesome. Great. Um, and for everyone who tuned in today, thank you so much for joining us. Just a note that you'll get a link tomorrow with a replay uh, video of this webinar, so you can watch it again if if you need to, or if you just want to catch up again. And there's also a, a coupon code, Luminar40, that you can use to purchase either one of Jeff's books at 40% off. So thank you so much, Jeff. That was really cool. Oh, thank you. And thanks, everybody, for showing up. Yeah. Well, have a great afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.